For any users of the Line 6 Helix, especially newer users, when we're searching for a particular delay to use, we could possibly run in to a bit of a confusing situation. We pull up the delay category on the Helix or HX Stomp Helix Native, whatever flavor of Helix we're using, and we find 20 some selections of different delays. And I've had a lot of questions about this over the years. You know, which is the best delay to use? What's the difference between delays? Now we've got a lot of choices and a lot of people might seem to look at it and go, this is really redundant. Why do we have all of these? Well, today I wanted to talk a little bit about the difference between some of the more common styles of delay so that we can kind of put to rest which one is best. I, I don't really think there is a best. As I say about a lot of things, it's really going to be dependent on the person's particular preference, what their end goals are, and what they're trying to accomplish. But the only way we can make educated decisions about this is if we understand what we're choosing and what we're using. So without further ado, let's dive in today and take a look at some of the different styles effects. We're not going to cover all of them. Obviously, this video would be far too long, but we will take a look at what I feel are some of the most important types of delays historically, and then hopefully that will help us to make more informed decisions about our choices of delays for whatever particular circumstance we're dealing with. So I thought a lot about how to do this properly, and I decided to simply set up a preset. I just threw in a uh, Matchstick Channel 1 amp. I didn't touch anything on it, just however it came up here. Um, if I turn this delay off, this is the sound of the tone just as is. <laughs> All right, so kind of a non-offensive little tone there. What I did here is you'll notice I have a whole pile of delays going here, and I really selected these very purposefully uh, to make sure that we're covering a nice array of the possibilities for delays in the Helix. Now, like I mentioned, I'm not gonna be able to cover all of them. There are some pretty unique delays within the Helix that I have done full videos about uh, in the past, so you can kind of go watch those videos to figure out what those are all about. But if you'll notice here, I have five snapshots. I have one called Simple, one called BBD, one called Memory Man, one called Tape, and one called Duct. So let's go through this one step at a time. The Simple snapshot is based around the Simple Delay. And you might say, well, what is the Simple Delay? Well, it's just that. It's a very simple digital delay without a lot of tweakability. We get our delay time, we get our feedback, we get our mix, essentially. Very easy to dial in. But this is going to be basically working on the idea of a traditional digital delay. And we'll come back and talk about that in a second. Second snapshot is BBD. You might say, well, what does that stand for? And if you notice, this is the bucket brigade delay, which is a boss analog delay, very famous boss analog delay. Uh, so this is where the first difference comes in. We have the simple delay being kind of a model of a digital delay, or it is just a digital delay, and the bucket brigade being a model of a classic analog de delay. You know, you might say, well, what is the difference between an analog and a digital delay? The analog delay is going to use this bucket brigade chip. And the reason it's called a bucket brigade, I've seen the analogy used that it's like a fireman passing a bucket down the line to put out a fire. We start at the beginning with a full bucket and as it gets passed down the line, more water spills out. And by the end of the line, there's much less water left in the bucket to actually splash on the fire. So I think that's where that originally comes from. But the analog delay basically uses a series of capacitors to sample the audio and pass it along to the next capacitor. Well, what happens is the signal is degraded in certain ways. There's also high cut filters or low pass filters applied to the signal, which gives it its signature sound very different than the digital delay. The digital delay is going to have a very pristine sound. What we put in is what we get out. We hit a note and those echoes are going to basically mimic that sound, whereas the analog delay is going to degrade that sound. So we'll come back and listen to examples of these in a moment. Now, I also threw in the Memory Man model, which is the Elephant Man, in the Helix, simply because some folks might say, well, that is also a Bucket Brigade style delay, and it is, but there's a couple differences here that I thought would be worth comparing it to the Bucket Brigade delay. Uh, some more features, and just want to see how the sound compared when dealing with kind of the similar settings. So we do have two analog delays here. Then we go back to the transistor tape, probably my favorite delay, which is a tape-based delay. So a tape-based delay basically 
was just that. It was a piece of tape that would record the audio onto it and then play it back to get the repetitions. So very interesting and a very unique character to the sound, much like the analog delay and much like the digital delay. So we have these three styles of delay that kind of really cover the main styles of delay that we've seen over the years. I also threw in the duct delay, and that's kind of an interesting one because this gives us the ability to have the delay stay out of the way audibly while we're playing, but when we stop playing, it senses we've stopped playing, it actually surges the delay sound up. So we can actually get away with maybe higher delay settings, more aggressive delay settings, shall we say, that will stay out of the way while we play, but then as soon as we stop, we hear that delay much louder. And we'll give examples of all this. So I thought one of the best ways to maybe approach this would be to set all the delays at the same settings. So if you notice, I have mix at 50%, feedback at 50%, and time at 300 milliseconds. I have that on the simple delay. I have the same setting on the bucket brigade here, 300 milliseconds, feedback at 50%, mix at 50%. I've turned other particular parameters like noise and the modulation off as much as I can for now, uh, just to kind of keep everything as equal as possible. You'll notice on the Elephant Man, I'm also at 300 milliseconds. Now you might ask why I chose 300 milliseconds on all of these, and that's simply because the Bucket Brigade, that's the max amount of delay we can get out of it. Now I do know before anybody says it that there's the Adriatic Delay, which is basically a modified version of the Adriatic Delay with a few other tweakable features and longer delay time. But I wanted to just keep it very classic here. We can look at those other delays in another video. So onto the transistor tape, same thing, 300 milliseconds, feedback at 50%, mix at 50%. If you notice, I took the wow and flutter down. We will talk about these extra features in a moment. But let's just go through this and kind of see what these all sound like. So you can watch up here where it's gonna go simple and then I'll switch through my snapshots. BBD is Bucket Brigade, the Memory Man, and the Transistor Tape. And after we'll look at the duck delay. So for now we have 300 millisecond delay, feedback at 50%, mix at 50% on all of these. And let's just hear what the character of each of these delays adds to those echoed repeats. Simple delay should be very clean and pristine, kind of giving us back what we put into it. Bucket Brigade and Memory Man should give us a little bit of color, or in fact, maybe a lot of color. Uh, we should lose a lot of highs and the echo should kind of fade away fairly quickly and kind of get lost a little bit. And the transistor tape should be kind of maybe, shall I say, a cross between the digital and the analog. I don't know if that's a good way to describe it, but it will have some character. It won't be the perfect reproduction, but it, it really is a beautiful reproduction, almost I guess we could say better than the original. I don't know that better, right? Again, there you go. Who, who's to decide whether it's better or not? But let's listen to these. I'll start off just hitting a single note, letting you hear the repeats and watch up here to see which one you're listening to. I'm sure it was pretty obvious you could hear the difference between all of those echoed repeats. And right away, that gives us a much better idea as to what we're dealing with with each delay. Let me do the same thing, but I'm going to kind of bounce back and forth with only hitting one on each, letting you hear maybe the tape versus the simple delay, you know, the uh, BBD bucket brigade versus the memory man and the tape versus the memory man and so on. So I'll try to just bounce around kind of randomly just so you can kind of hear the differences of each of those in comparison to one another. And again, just watch up here on the snapshot and you'll know which one you're listening to at any given moment.
So I think it's pretty obvious we'll hear a lot of difference between all of these. Um, even between the two analog delays, the Bucket Brigade is a much kind of darker sound to it, if you noticed. The Memory Man is a little more faithful to the original, but has a different character on the tail ends of the repeat as well. Listen right to the very tail ends of each repeat. Depending on how hard or soft I hit kind of affects things. We get all sorts of different artifacts from the particular delays because of the way that they're creating those delays. So very interesting stuff. Now, I think that that kind of sums up the difference and will give you an idea of which one you might want to use in particular situations. But a few points about it, you might say, well, when would I want to use each? Well, you know, something like the simple delay, a digital delay where the, the delay is very pristine is going to kind of maybe cut through the mix a lot more. It's going to be more noticeable. Uh, sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes that's a bad thing. Uh, something like an analog delay is going to be much more buried in the mix just because we've lost a lot of that high end and it's going to have a lot of this darkness to it. So sometimes we can set the mix and feedback maybe a little bit higher and still have it kind of blend in with the mix, which can be a very good thing. Again, there, it's really not for me to say which is the best, which is the worst. I, I don't know. It's really going to be up to us depending on the particular situation we like. And everybody's going to have very different tastes as far as this as well. If we want something that's kind of of not quite as pristine as the digital delay, but not quite as dark as the, say, the Bucket Brigade delay, you know, we could go something like the Memory Man or the Transistor Tape, a nice tape delay. Now, we also have other features on these, and if we go to something like the Bucket Brigade delay, you'll notice we, we don't really have any ability to add any modulation to the delay, but something like the Memory Man we do. So I'm gonna just up the time here. You'll see that we can get a maximum of 500 milliseconds on the Elephant Man. And that's actually kind of an interesting point too here. If I go to the simple delay, I can get all the way up to eight seconds of delay. On the transistor tape, I can get all the way up to two seconds of delay. And on the Memory Man, up to 500 milliseconds. So one of the main limitations of an analog delay is that we don't get a lot of delay time out of it. A lot of times it can be as short as 250 milliseconds, 300 milliseconds, up to you know something like the Elephant Man, which goes up to 500 milliseconds. But this is kind of neat. We can add chorus or vibrato. And notice I, I'm gonna select chorus here. Uh, I'm gonna bring the delay time up and let's just bring this depth all the way up and see what this does to our echoed repeats. <laughs> So you can really hear the modulation on those echoes. Obviously at 10, it's, it's very dramatic, but I could also bring this down for a subtle effect. So we can see we can get quite dramatic with it, or we could have it on a vibrato setting as well. So that's a, one another way we can really kind of add some character to our delay. Obviously, you can see you can get some pretty zany, wacky things going on there. Obviously, something like the simple delay doesn't have that. The bucket brigade doesn't have that, anything like that as well. But what about the tape delay, the transistor tape delay? We have something called wow and flutter, which is just basically going to mimic the imperfections of the tape that is going to be recording and playing back what is creating our delay sound. So without any wow and flutter, we have that, you hear that nice little grit on the end of the notes. Now, if I bring that wow and flutter, let's just go really extreme with it. Do you hear that unsteadiness in the sound? That's a much more stable sound. You 
can hear a little bit of warble in there, which is really kind of a nice effect to have. And again, you know, just having a little bit of it in there can make a nice difference as well. So really nice stuff. And that tends to be one of my favorite delays. Going back to the simple delay, though, you might say, well, where would I ever want something like this? And, you know, we could have a situation where we need a really long delay. And this would be the perfect one for it, potentially, right? <laughs> where we have it almost four seconds later. But the other one that I kind of like it for is when we get something like this where you maybe get like a dotted eighth note kind of a thing going. that type of a thing uh, so that we have just a mix of 50 so that both notes are going to be the same volume and feedback is zero so we don't have them kind of building up on one another and then we time it so we're playing eighth notes and then we get this kind of bouncy effect where the dotted eighth note kind of creates 16th notes around the notes that we're playing. Now, obviously, we have to play perfectly in time with the 120 beats per minute that I have set here or whatever tempo we did have it set at. I could change this and then I would just have to play faster to have it kind of match that up. And that's going to be because I have it set to note sync. Now, one final example I wanted to talk about today was this duck delay. Now, this is a pretty typical digital delay, but it gives us the ability to low cut and high cut. But that's not what I'm talking about in this. I've done a particular video on the duck delay before, but I'm talking about this ducking. And you might say, well, what is the ducking? Well, the ducking is going to be that while I'm playing, if I set this ducking up to 100%, while I'm playing, you should hear no delay, no echoed repeats. And as soon as I stop, whatever those last things I played were should continue with the delay. So let's look, take a listen to this. You'll notice I have this turned on. Uh, let's do this first, actually, ducking on zero. Now, that's pretty aggressive settings mix at 50% feedback at 38%. If I take this ducking to 100 now, listen to what happens while I'm playing. You heard no delay and you might go, well, what just happened? Well, watch what happens if I'm playing a similar lick and then I stop. So it allows us to get really aggressive with it. I could have way more feedback maybe. And it's not going to react until I stop playing. Now we can also adjust how it attacks and releases as well. You'll notice that that allowed the, the, the ducking to not grab on so quickly. Whereas there, it grabbed on right away. Same with the release. <laughs> Come on. 
comes in much quicker after I stop playing. So there's all sorts of ways to tweak this, but I just wanted to make everybody aware of this kind of a thing. And, you know, obviously I could go with something like a much more mild setting, 50%, so that we still get a little bit of delay while I'm playing, and then the vast majority is going to come in after, which is probably going to sound a little bit more natural. <laughs> And again, we can adjust the, the attack and release. So it's a much more natural effect. All right, there you have it. What did you guys think? I know I didn't cover every delay. I, I wasn't going to do that. It would have been a really, really long video. I think it was long enough as it was. But I wanted to cover kind of those basics of analog, tape, and digital delay. Just so folks can really kind of finally maybe hear the difference when compared with the exact same settings to, to really kind of hone our ear in to what sound maybe we gravitate towards or knowing what particular situations a particular delay might be better in. So I hope that that was informative. I hope it was enjoyable. Please like the video, share it with anybody who you think would get some use or enjoyment out of watching it, and also subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. I'll be back really, really soon with some more. Thank you guys again so much for tuning in. Ciao for now.